I'm Janelle Manos, business reporter with the Boston Globe, and this is Bold Types, conversations with Boston's business leaders. Today, we'll be talking with Joanne Chang, the owner of the Flower Bakery and Myers and Chang restaurants. So, Joanne, you left Harvard thinking you were going to kind of go into the world of consulting. That's what you were doing for a while. But secretly, you harbored a love of baking. Talk with me a little bit about how that sort of secret side hustle that you started became what you now do as a day-to-day -day career. I think what led me to finally kind of make that jump was I was trying to figure out kind of what to do next. All of my coworkers were going on to business school or they were like mo rapidly moving up within the company and I knew that that wasn't for me. I was young enough that I thought, well, I spend all of my free time cooking and baking and thinking about food. I said, maybe I'll spend a year in a restaurant and just see what that's like. Once I got into a restaurant setting, I knew that that's where I was meant to be. There's something about just the hustle and bustle of making food and presenting it to guests and getting that immediate sense of satisfaction that you're making somebody happy right then and there that I just fell in love with. I wanted to be back in Boston and I wanted to be baking and making great things for people. Um, I, I don't know that I knew how how much running the business was going to take over my life. I thought I could open a bakery and continue to bake and somehow the business would run itself, but <laughs> I found out very quickly that doesn't happen. So, I mean, you at the time were living above the bakery, the first one in the South End, and you were waking up at, I don't even know how early. Two in the morning. Two in the morning. Three in the morning. To, but usually like two in the morning. Okay. Yeah. To do the full bake and then yeah. running the business on the side. How did you go from realizing like this is the one thing I can manage to thinking this is something that can grow? And Honestly, we had a group of people working for us at the time that were really wonderful and strong and they wanted to continue staying at the bakery. And there was no growth for them. There was no room for them to grow because we just had one location. So the whole idea of opening up a second location came mostly to give opportunity to about five people. And we thought if we open a second bakery, they'll have room to grow. And four of them are still with us. Once we did the second, then Kind of the same reason, the third one followed. The second and the one is actually harder than oh, most of the other ones, exactly. right? That's what they always say. It is. Once you've figured out how to do a second one, you yourself have to, you have to figure out how to pull yourself out of the day-to-day -day of the business a little bit more and trust other people to run it. And the more you do that, the more you can then see further down the line to growing even more. What are some of the things you do to kind of encourage growth within staff and kind of encourage people to stay? We spend a huge amount of our time thinking about that challenge and how we can provide more opportunity for the team so that they will stay. Regardless of your position, whether you're a dishwasher or a manager or a baker, anything, we can give you tools so that you can then go on to whatever your next job is, whatever your career is, and become better at that. You know, we talk a lot about time management and respect for others and working well with the team and having difficult conversations and you know all of those things that you read about in management books um, most of them are very applicable for just real life. Do you find yourself reading management books? I haven't read an actual management book in a long time but I used to read a lot. What are the hardest things for you in running the business? Like how are what are the biggest challenges you've had to overcome? For me the hardest thing is that I I like control and I like everything to be a certain way um, and I recognize that every time we grow, uh, I lose a little bit of control. You know, we still strive for the same things that we always have. Great food, great service, giving back to the neighborhood, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, but now there's like this team of people doing that. And so my challenge is how to communicate what's important to me personally, to everybody, to all of our staff. You also have your restaurant, yes. Myers and Chang, which is co-owned by your husband, Christopher yes. Myers. Talk to me a little bit about how that sort of counterbalances the, you know, what you're doing at Flower, because you're still getting behind, the, you're still getting in the kitchen in Myers exactly. and Chang on a regular basis. Exactly. When I go there, I'm on the line because it gives me an opportunity just to work with everybody. And, and I know that the chef is running the kitchen and I know that the GM is running the front. So I, I don't get as involved with like the nitty gritty. It's really fun for me to go there. I'm there typically on Monday nights and Friday nights and I work a couple hours on the line. It gives me a chance to see all the line cooks, to see the guests, to see the servers, and to taste the food, which is really important just to consistently kind of taste the food you know, every two or three times a week, just make sure everything's being made properly. You're a big taster. I feel yes. like this is kind of one of the things I love about you yeah. is that, you know, you're constantly, if you're following your Instagram Always. feed, you're eating constantly. What you have to do is train your palate. And the only way you can train it is by eating something a thousand times. Because then if something's wrong, you'll finally notice it. 
Yeah, you'll immediately notice it. So if you only eat it every now and then, it might be a little bit off, but you're not really sure and it still tastes good, so no big deal. As soon as something's wrong, I can tell immediately. What are the bold moments that you look for in your day or that you feel like you get to experience as a leader? I am naturally very, very shy. I don't like to talk to people. I have a really hard time being on camera. And yet I'm constantly in front of a camera or in front of a group of staff or in front of my managers at a manager meeting. And even though I would much rather be in a room by myself with my computer writing everything, um, I make a point of making sure that I'm out with the teams looking at the product and talking to the managers. For us, it is about being bold and saying, this is what we want. We want to say hi to you and, and say, have a great day. And we're trying always to figure out how can we connect with people because that's kind of why we're here is to connect with people.